And the other thing which I keep hearing, which, which makes me crazy, is that, oh, it is always better to have civilians in power than to have soldiers in power. Who told them that? Who told them that? Check the record. Check the Ghanaian record. As a matter of fact, if you take the Nkrumah government, which was completely outstanding, huh, we did so much, established 400 industries as well. Which government comes close to Nkrumah? It's a Japan government. Okay, you feed yourself on industries. You know, the, 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 the effort to expand electricity supply and so on. Look at the record of the Chambon government. And then, as if as for soldiers, they are not human beings. Soldiers are citizens like all other Ghanaian citizens. They have a right to participate in the decision-making process. OK? They, like all other citizens, have to contribute to make sure that this economy grows. They, like all other citizens, have to ensure that our access to social services like education, health, and so on is guaranteed, and so on. You understand? So don't let us talk as if, as for soldiers, they are not human beings or they are not citizens, and so on. They are. Perhaps what we ought to be talking about is that their participation should be guided by democratic principles and so on. But they are human beings like all of us, and they are entitled to participate in, 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 in the processes and so on. I look you know, around, and I get really shocked. Look, what the Kenyans are protesting against includes E-Levy, doesn't it? Look at how we handled E-Levy in Ghana. Don't you feel ashamed? It is not about the fact that we didn't take to the streets. That's not the issue. The, 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 the useless rat matters which occurred in Parliament to no effect. Look at Parliament. Look at Parliament. You have a situation where majority of, of the majority mm, comes to the conclusion that the finance minister is underperforming and he has to go home. All of the minority comes to the conclusion that the finance minister is not performing, he has to go home. And yet when there's a vote, the finance minister wins. What a joke. Oh, what, what do these politicians take us for? How, can it, how is that possible when the majority of the majority uh, has come to the conclusion that the finance minister is no good, he has to go home? And all of the minority has come to the conclusion that the finance minister should go home. And yet when they vote, the finance minister wins. What kind of circles is that? You know, so Kwame, I hope that we learn the important lessons from what is happening in Kenya. And there's one more thing. I've been listening to commentary on the Western media and also locally. And they all tell you that, oh, this is a youthful affair. Is the youth Who told them that? Who conducted that census? Who conducted that census? How did they determine that this thing is inspired by the youth and is the youth who are leading it? It's the whole United Kenyan people who are engaged in a struggle to improve their destiny. You understand? As if, oh, as of this is youthful people, you know, some people go to the extent of saying that they have no experience and so on. And Ruto himself had the nerves to come and tell us that, uh, oh, as for the violence and so on, it's not by the demonstrators, for criminal infiltrators. Who are those criminal infiltrators? I should stop wasting our time with, with such useless analysis which has no basis at all. Why? If you take the, 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 the population, the segmentation of the population of Kenya, more than 70% of the Kenyan people are young people. So if there's a manifestation in which young people appear to dominate, that's a reflection of the demographics of Kenya. You understand? Clear reflection of the demographics of, 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 of Kenya. And we should stop peddling those stories. The people of Kenya are rejecting the neoliberal approach to national development. The people of Kenya are saying to themselves and the world that these IMF measures would not resolve the fundamental problems that confront them. You understand? And what are the IMF measures? 1982, we went to the IMF and the World Bank. What did they tell us? We should privatize state enterprises. 
We should devalue the national currency. We should redeploy labor, which simply means sack workers. You understand? Redeploy labor and so on. We implemented all those measures. Where did it take us? By 2000, money supply had gone up by 50%. Inflation was moving around 49% and so on, in spite of all these measures. Now, guess what? The country representative of the IMF and the World Bank, when, when, when President Kufo was coming into office, quickly wrote a letter to him telling him about how the economy had been destroyed and, and, and so on. And Kufo bought it. Eventually, they pushed him to HIPIC. What happened with HIPIC and so on? Then, interestingly, eh? Interestingly, by 2009, when Atamius was coming into office, the same people who were running the economy under Kufo, IMF and World Bank, wrote to Atamius telling him about how uh, the Kufo administration had destroyed the economy. We should stop listening to these jokers. The economists in the IMF and the World Bank, are they better than the economists we have in the University of Ghana? Huh? In the University of Professional Studies and so Are they better? We have people here, academics, economics, lawyers, and so on, who are better trained, better understand our situation than those jokers in the IMF and the World Bank. And it's about time that we began to listen to our own people. Indeed, it is clear from, from real practice that those professors in the universities and so on, they don't know about the Ghanaian economy. They don't know more about the Ghanaian economy better than the cocoa farmers in the villages. What do they do to write their thesis and so on? They go to the cocoa farmers and collect information. What they have, which perhaps the cocoa farmers do not have, is to put that information in a certain order, uh, certain order which meets the, 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 the needs of academia and so on. They don't have anything more than the cocoa farmer. Why? Do they know the effects of petroleum price increases better than the taxi driver and the truck truck driver? They should stop wasting our time. The time has come for the masses in Africa to take over their countries. The time has come for the mass of Africa to spearhead the patriotic revolution which is taking place in Africa. And Kenya is just one of the few. Kenya is just about to fall. You know, neo-colonialism is just about to fall in Kenya. And, and many African countries should be ready. Because the tide is blowing through the continent and the world. And there's no force we can stop this tide which is blowing across the world.